So anyway, enough talk of burps. Let's go with the clay. So I've mixed up this nice colour and I've blended a bit of brown and, and stone colour. So the grommet colour. Sly cat, <laughs> cat, please. Well, the sly cat is in there, actually. I put that in um, from last time's request. So, so there we go. I promise that's in the goldfish bowl, which you can just about see in the background. So it's going to give it a little rustle. Give it a further mix up. Like so. And that's ready for the end. So that's something to look forward to as well, to keep your excitement levels going. Um, so I'm going to take off a sizable lump for this. And as I say, you can make them all sorts of different sizes. I've realised that actually people are making all sorts of different sizes. Some are making small ones, some are making big ones. Um, really, it's completely up to you. Um, so I've got this clay and I'm going to warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to go for a kind of, I'd say, it's kind of like a parsnip shape. Or you could say a kebab shape or a fat carrot. Choice is yours. So what colours did I blend there? Um, I used the nice chocolatey brown colour, which is um, just off camera. And I used a bit of stone, but you could use white as well. Um, I mixed up some colours for tomorrow. So it doesn't take very long to actually blend colours. Um, I A dormouse would be brilliant, lovely. And these two big sausages <laughs> of clay um, I've been mixing up for making camels. So that's for my camel, test camels later on. Um, so you can see you can go quite large, um, well, big poos by the looks of it, actually, but uh, big lumps of colour there. So they're all ready to go for my test ones as well. A sloth kebab. Brilliant. Well, I would not recommend that. It'd be a very expensive kebab and morally dubious. <laughs> so I'm just rounding off the end there. So I'm going to have a slightly pointed end and that's going to be the bottom. They seem to have little, very narrow bottoms and they've got a lovely round face. I'm really quite in love with the shape of these guys. Um, there are still sloths in the mix, so we could get another pool one and end up with a three-toed sloth. And the three-toed sloth is quite a different shape again, actually. So um, I'm going to keep that one in there. I felt like last time when we did the draw, um, I did. There we go. Somebody uh, influences in grey and green uh, likes the carrots. We've got lots of carrots appearing on the screen. Tina, hello. How are you doing? Um, yes. Last time the woodlouse did come out again, but I felt like I, at the moment, I'd pretty done as much as I could with the woodlouse, but I would probably like to revisit it at some like time. Might do a giant sea louse or something like that, which look a bit different. So there we have our shape. And I'm just going to bend it over a little bit to give you a nice round face. There we go. Now, I'm going to put the face on quite early on, actually, just to give a sense of what we're actually making. So I'm going to sit it there like a giant comma or like a worm has come out of the table. <laughs> And I'm going to use a little bit of grey. Now, you could go with other colours. I've got some grey and some white and some black here. And I've also got, I'm going to use some brown um, from that big sausage that I've made earlier um, from the camel. And I'm going to um, use those later on for the eyes as well. So we have plenty of colours to go on there as well. Uh, could you do a hammered, hammerhead shark? Yes, I certainly could. Um, I will watch this again. I have to force myself to watch my, my stupid... Um, <laughs> listen to my stupid voice. Slow down, please. It says, uh, there we go. OK, I will take my time a little more. Um, all we've done so far is bent a sausage over or a carrot over. So I think you haven't missed much so far. Seconding the hammerhead shark. I've got a couple of hammerhead sharks in there. I'm going to make the muzzle for our slot. So I'm always aware of time. We went to about 50 minutes yesterday, which was, I'm very happy to stay as long as people are to stay and watch, really, um, a bear, please. There's quite a few bears in there, but I will add those as well. So as I say, I do um, actually sit down on, and take annotations off it and write them on bits of paper and then add them to the uh, to the bowl as well. Um, Abby's still mixing. That's absolutely fine. As I say, um, I'll try and get this up this evening as well. So I was quite quick off the mark yesterday and didn't have too much in the way of technological problems. It's not easy to say that, is it? So I'm just putting the muzzle on. Can you see that? So I'm adding, they've got this lovely, almost like a little, if any of you um, older people remember, like Cheekaboo. It's a little bit like Cheekaboo. A teddy bear, if you like, yeah, like a teddy bear. And it's almost got like a little plasticky looking face. Um, the three-toed sloth has got a white mask, which would actually be quite easy to do. Um, and then these black stripes across the eyes as well, really quite striking. So I'm going to leave the shape 
like that for the moment. And I'll take two smaller parts, two small balls of grey clay. And this is going to make, as you can see on the front there, if I turn our sloth around, we're going to make these little spectacle bits that go around the eyes as well. So um, there we go, like that. If I lay them on as a very simple shape. So make a round ball and then give it a squidge with your finger, like so. There we go, and blend those in. Now you can use your fingers or use a tool if you want to. So I'm going to flatten that in and make them a little bit larger now. So if you start with a smaller ball, you can then start to drag that in as well. I'm going to put a little bit of white around the outside afterwards. We're going to get the eyes on and we're going to put a nose on and we're going to feel a little bit more like it's taking shape. So when I was doing these before, and I still do, obviously, well, not at the moment, but I still do. Uh, work with Arvin running workshops and I used to try and keep the head as the best bit to last on things like Sean the Sheep but actually I feel sometimes it's really nice to get the face in there first so you can get some confidence and feel like you can really see what you're making and it's not quite a mystery of shapes um, to the very end because that can be disheartening a bit as well. So I'm just smoothing that in using these lovely tools provided uh, by George as well. If you forget to buy black, can you mix out of any other colours? You could add several other colours together. Um, black isn't necessarily um, in there, really. I, it can just make a dot in the eyes by pushing a pin or the cocktail stick into the middle as well to make the pupil. Dweg there, hello, waving. How are you doing? Um, so I'm going to take a pencil now. I'm going to poke our sloth in the eye. So they've got these eyes quite far apart. So put the stick in, the pencil in like so, and then wiggle it around. Like so. So I'm going to do that twice. But you could go brown for the pupils, you could go grey, add some brown and grey, or go completely different colours as well. Like so. So I'm going to add the eyeballs and then I'll add a nose as well. So I'm just going to sit my sloth there. And if you've ever been to Bristol Zoo, you'll find them in the nocturnal zone, nocturnal world, which is really brilliant. It's got all sorts of things like kangaroo rats and one of my very, very favourite um, creatures in the whole world. And that is an eye eye. I've been obsessed with eye eyes since a very young age. And they're a kind of lemur and they have incredible, uh, well, they're incredible look to them. They're quite Halloween-y looking really. You've got these big old yellow eyes, golden eyes. So I'm gonna put the ball of clay in. I might make that a little smaller actually, a tiny bit smaller. Um, and these amazing massive incisors and they've got wild wiry hair and these huge bat ears and um, then they've got lots of different fingers they've got one very long finger for winkling out gravity they've got these incredible incisors that can scythe through wood and they can open up wood and these big bat ears where they listen for grubs and then they can winkle out the grubs from the hole in the trees um, and pull them out and then gobble them up so they're quite an amazing Looking little character. Sloths are equally incredible. Um, spend all the time in trees and then come down to go to the toilet. So poo talk. They come down from a tree and then have a latrine where they do poos on there as well. Um, yeah, so really absolutely amazing. Uh, Tidy Spectacles is saying poisonous too with a fork tongue. Um, I'm not sure actually. That's a that's a good that's a good bit of knowledge though. Um, they also grow moss and algae in their fur because they move um, very slowly, as adventures in grey and green say. Um, so I'm going to add a bit of brown. Actually, I'm going to pinch a bit of brown from over here. And um, they also have, I think it's either the three-toed sloth, I think it might be, has a specific species of moth that lives in its fur and lays its eggs in its fur and they hatch from there as well. And they're... Um, they're um, indigenous or having this symbiotic relationship where they all live together so they live on the on the sloth itself and there's also I think a species of moth that does it in their poos as well so a lot of poo talk already lovely so I'm going to take some little bits of black just to make the middle of the pupil and I'll also put that little dot in with the stick as well to um, cocktail stick just to emphasise 
the centre of the eye as well. So that's just a nice addition. So this is the first time I think we've done a pupil colour and then put the um, centre of the pupil, the, the iris bit in the middle as well. So there we go, we're building up two colours or three colours on top of each other. And I'm just going to grab a cocktail stick and I'm going to put those little dots in the eyes. So we're starting to see a bit of character. Like so. There we go, looking rather nice. And I'm going to use a bit of black, but you could use brown and grey or dark brown. So you get several different colours of brown. Um, in the packs of colour, you can get a dark brown and a lighter brown, a mid brown. So this, this is the mid brown, the T-Rex is the mid brown, and you get almost a black brown as well, which is rather nice. So I'm just going to make a nose. And the nose is very moist and looks rather plastic and that's what gives it that kind of slightly cheekaboo effect really so we're just going to show you that there in fact I'm going to go a little bit bigger a bit more generous with the nose so use a little bit more clay and start off with a ball and then squash it into a kind of tic-tac shape a flattened tic-tac and you can push that onto the front as well lovely like that it has a little bit of a press in the middle there Almost like a baked bean, actually, like a kidney shape. It's quite good. And I'm going to add, I'm going to use a pencil to add some nostrils as well. So you can always look on the internet as well to have some picture reference. So I always like to do that to see what I'm making, and then you can distort that and make it more cartoony as well. And as Leafy Fern says, I was obsessed with sloths as a kid. Now we're in lockdown, I can get to be one. Excellent, <laughs> exactly. Though I have seen you rampaging through the countryside, destroying it in cars as well. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, not entirely, not entirely slothful. <laughs> so we've got a nice snouty mouth in there and I'm just going to make sure that's nicely attached. In fact, what I'm going to use is my tools to then start to tease out a bit of the clay. I might finish that off later on but just make sure it's nicely attached and I'm going to put a little bit of a mouth underneath there as well so I'm adding a little bit of the corners to the mouth I'm cartooning this one up a bit more actually from the first one so the first one the test one is where I'm really prototyping and, and discovering what to do and this one I can start to play a bit more with it and push the shapes around a little bit as well so there we go I think it's looking rather nice actually quite enjoying this and it's it's a learning curve for me as well so this gives me the opportunity to really push sculpting and have a play and um and it's really nice to have you alongside as well really just video games yes obviously not rampaging through the countryside marauding in in cars although um yes given a, a land rover i'm sure you would as well Sloths on trees, you could put a sloth on a tree. Um, a little problem with gravity, so you could have your sloth hanging, and that would be rather nice. You could just turn the head, or you could have it hugging a, a tree as well. I was going to do that, but I thought I would just show you the simple shapes, and then you can choose to customise that as you go along. Hello, Nikki, how are you doing? You are right? <laughs> I'm not expecting an answer. It's, very <laughs> it's a... It's a very weird thing. I don't get to have many uh, conversations with people. So this is actually rather a nice thing for me every day to, to reach out to people and have a chat in brief little pockets of uh, of text as well. So this is rather nice. So there we have our rather, I think rather cute, actually a little sloth there. So I don't need the grey anymore. Certainly not for the moment. We'll come back to the white. I think we'll need a bit more of that. And the black I'll get rid of as well. So that's out of there. Keep things a little bit tidier as well. There we go. So... I'm going to make some arms now. Arms and legs are really long and I didn't push them too far. Now the three-toed sloth, as opposed to the two-toed sloth, has even longer limbs and is this very weird shape. And if you look on uh, YouTube, you can find lots of pictures of them <clears throat> doing, uh, kind of when they get off the ground, they can actually swim, which is quite incredible. When they come onto the ground, they actually um, kind of almost swim across the ground in a very weird fashion as well. Adventures in grey and green. Is isolation animation animating the characters? Um, 
I'm thinking about doing that. Um, at the moment, I'm just making the models, but next week I might take the next step and do some little quick animations as well. So I'm going to tear off four reasonable sized lumps of clay for the arms and legs. There we go. Let's move that cocktail stick out of the way. If you've got any questions at this stage, you're very welcome to uh, to ask them as well, and I'll try and answer as we go along. It's a nice relaxed affair because it's the afternoon of Friday um, and it's the weekend, whatever that means these days. But um, yeah, it'll be nice because I've only got one more video to do and then I've got Sunday off to um, to do lots of other projects as well. So I've been putting handles on some of my spoon carving knives and getting those ready to have a go with those. And Turgo says they get eaten by piranhas when they fall into the water. That does happen sometimes. Yeah, eye eyes uh, are very cute. Tiny spectacles, that's right. I really, really love them. They're absolutely amazing. So I've got four roughly, roughly equal bits of clay. I've almost made cocktail sausages or wieners, if you like, ready to, to be turned into other things. A day off, says Andy. Yes, slow speed, please, says Abby. Are you still mixing your clay? Um, leave it a little bit marbly because there are different textures and colours in there. So adding a few little bits like that. And then when you stretch the uh, the tools across the clay, drag them across the clay, it will help to have this kind of multicoloured um, effect as well. Hedgehogs, please. <laughs> Lots of requests from Adventures in uh, Grey and Green. Um, yes, I shall add more hedgehogs as well. Yes, says Abby. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to move on very slowly and I'm going to make some carrots. So, yes, the carrots are back in force. We're going to have four carrots. Now, I've made them over long um, because we can always tear some off the end at the end. Lovely. And I'm going to make four carrots of different sizes so two for the arms are going to be a little bit longer and then the two for the legs can be a little bit shorter i don't think there's a massive difference in in their limb length actually but i think for the character it'll look a little bit nicer we can bend reality a little bit so that's not too bad and I might not even need as much clay. i'm going to use a little bit less clay for the legs a bumblebee please that would be lovely actually yeah do, I'll put that into the bowl for next week, or well, the week after his draw. So we're drawing that this afternoon. As you can see, put the goldfish bowl out there ready, brimming with suggestions. And I'll draw it live so you can see that I'm not cheating. And just pulling out five times little Jim. I think there are only four in there actually. There we go, some slightly smaller carrots for the legs. So I'll make the arms first. And what I'm going to do Yes, I've done a lot of the work already with this carrot shape. Hey, let's make Jim Park. <laughs> Cold Knight says, love your audience. Thank you. It's the um, it's the only company I've got really at the moment, apart from uh, poor Nosy Parkin is in the other room on another call, having to work away. So um, yes, we're, we're trying to organise our, our time. And I think it's nice to do this so I don't just talk at her all the time. And frankly, these guys, don't give a lot back, really, in terms of um, audience reaction. So um, I'm going to take my tool. So I would use a cocktail stick to show you how to do. So I'm going to start with it being a two-toed sloth. And I'm going to push the stick into the end of the arm, the end of the carrot shape. And I'm going to tease out two nice long claws. They've got really long claws for hooking into the trees, around the trees. They're almost like a kind of sickle shape it's quite incredible I don't want to get on the wrong end of a sloth's claws really doesn't seem to be a lot of hand to it there's an awful lot of claw there there we go so I've just opened that up and hopefully you can see that and um we've had a suggestion <laughs> my daughter is suggesting a demigorgon but uh, uh, that may need some Netflix Stranger Things uh, research um, yes, yes, it might. I've, I've yet to watch the last series, actually. Um, sometimes I can't deal with the stress, to be honest. It's um, something that's happened with age. 
I used to really enjoy the horror of it and these days um, it affects my sleep so um, so I don't always watch it <laughs> also trying to avoid trademarks as well but I might do a, a my version of it as well I am working on some um, some other little projects uh, little kind of fan projects from other cartoons as well so I might do one of those as well so what I've done there is made the little fingers and I'm making the forearm as you can see quite long so I've bent it over in half and then I'm just going to slightly flatten the top part of the carrot and uh, like so and I'm, I'm not going to need all of that so I'm going to tear another piece off so you've always got spare clay for another creature as well it's a collection of different browns and greys and colours so that is one long arm and that even in itself might be a bit large so I'll leave that one as it is and come on to the next one I can adjust as I go so again I've got this carrot shape I'm going to split the end into two claws so get your cocktail stick and just push it down the middle and roll that over and then you can start to tease out those shapes so hopefully you're all set for a good weekend as well um, just ordered some more seed trays and I'm building another cold frame for the garden um, some wood lice have taken some of my early seedlings, our, our early seedlings, unfortunately. Um, so we're already learning from bitter experience the uh, scything power of the wood louse eating the most delicious little seedlings as they've just popped out. They've all been scythed off. Slow down, please. We're really not going very fast today. We're, um, we haven't done a great deal so far. I know it's a sloth, but, um, you know. There are limits. <laughs> so I've just made those fingers again. So I'm just repeating that process. And I've made the forearm and I'm going to measure it against the other one. And I'm then going to bend in to make an elbow. And you can sharpen that elbow as well, work your way around. And then, as we did before, this time making sure I've got a left and a right arm. So that I think was my left arm. So this one is going to be the right arm. So I'm going to flatten one side and then soften it down what are we doing we're doing the arms that's what we're doing we're making long arms you see like so so we're going to shorten the forearm a minute so we've made two longer carrots remember for the arms speed up please <laughs> literally can't wait i've been laughing uh up my shirt sleeves at um a good friend matt sewell and if you're Fans of birds and bird illustration, Matt Sewell does um, brilliant videos on how to do bird illustrations as well. Uh, and he has a lot of this slow down, speed up. It's all rather difficult. As I say, I will be posting the video so you can do this again at your own pace as well. So I'm going to take a tool. You could use the pencil for this, but I'm going to add a little bit of a crease into the arm there because I'm going to put some texture on the arm. That creates a nice... <laughs> yeah, thanks, Andy. <laughs> Carrot fans, Shona's, Shona's in the house. Big carrot fan, big panda fan. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just putting the tool in there and bending that over like so. And I'll add a bit of texture later on. So I've just flattened the side. So if you look at it from the front, I've just grown with the cocktail stick and split the end of the carrot into half. And I'm just teasing that out into bends and then bent the carrot in half to make the forearm and I've just added a bit of a crease in there for that and then I've flattened the top of the carrot into a upper arm uh, hopefully that will um <laughs> big panda says shown <laughs> and uh, that is the forearms so we'll add those in a second lovely so we're really starting to see our sloth come together. So I'm going to maybe even shorten a little bit more. Just take a little bit off and just adjust as you go along. If you find they are completely too big, then you can obviously start again. So I'm going to add the arm up here. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm not exactly going for full you know, anatomical model. Um, and I'm, as you can see, I've just used my finger there to smooth the clay around now they've got really quite long shaggy fur so i'm not going to worry about getting that too smooth at this stage 
can we make Garfield, please? <laughs> I was a massive Garfield fan when I was a kid. Um, still kind of like him. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I even had a few of the uh, Garfield figures and I had loads of the books and had an obsession with Lasagna due to Garfield as well. And um, I've got a fat cat of my own now who has Garfield-like tendencies, but is not obviously bothered by Lasagna. Or, well, he thinks he is until he actually gets up close to it. Um, and he's certainly not bothered by coffee. And actually, I think he quite likes Mondays as well. There we go. So I've just smoothed that in. I'm working all the way around. And I've been quite rough with it because I'm going to add some texture later on. Just making sure it's really nicely attached. There we go. Could make Hamish uh, uh, McMarmalade. That would be fantastic. Shona has a beautiful... Uh, ginger tom cat called hamish um who's the worst fighter in all the world is constantly in trouble with other cats um and hamish would be rather fantastic he's a beautiful little chubby boy there we go so that's one arm on and i'm going to add the other and you can have them crossing over each other as well you can see there's a slight difference in color there as well um and that's because i didn't worry too much about um adding you know completely mixing in the color because there are all sorts of different tones of brown i left it a little bit marbled and that means you can be a bit more lazy with it so i'm going to add this other arm on and if i get a bit of black on there that doesn't matter that will add texture later on as well so um so yeah absolutely you can play around with it i'm going to add that arm on and play around with the position of it as well a little bit so i'm going to have this one slightly coming up And we've got somebody says, Eric says, multiple animals feels like making stop motion. What stop motion app would you recommend? Now, that's a great question. Um, I use several. Um, if I'm using an iPad or my phone, I have um, the piece of software called um, an app called Stop Motion Studio. to about as unimaginative a name as you could possibly get. Um, but it's absolutely brilliant. And. You can even, if you've got an iPad and you use your phone as well, you could use one as a remote control and viewer so you can remotely press the shutter if you're filming with either and shoot remotely so not having to get up and move while shooting. I also, for classes, use um, an app called Animate It, which is brilliant, and that's one we use at Ardman. And if you've ever been to We The Curious or at Bristol, then you can always do that as well. Have we done... Can you add cookie and muffin, our fluffy cats? And he says, well, I've seen your fluffy cats. They are fantastic. I'll um, add those to the mix as well. Um, have you done an octopus? No, not yet, but there are a couple of octopus in the drawer, um, including um, a Dumbo octopus as well, which is quite exciting. That was from uh, Mr. Matthew Pennington. He's obviously got some good um, octopus knowledge. I'm quite a fan of the cephalopod. Um, and there's a whole host of good things. Like that. We haven't even got cuttlefish in there. so Or giant squid. Or squid of any kind. So, um, so there's still a whole world out there to be made. A tree, please. Um, you've got a lot of suggestions today, Adventures in Grey and Green. It's quite um, a diverse um, array of, uh, of requests there. So I shall add all of those. You can see that I'm just adding a little bit of texture to make a shaggy arm. So I'm just you can use a paintbrush. This is rather like the end of a paintbrush, this this tool here, this wooden tool that um, that George has beautifully made for me. And as I say, if you'd like tools like this, um, George is online and I will put a link with his tools later on in the stories and you can have a look at the amazing things he's doing. He's actually made the most incredible uh, creature, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, creature from the house elf from uh, Harry Potter. He's made an incredible headbuster that on a wooden stand and he's selling a couple of those at what I think is a ridiculously cheap price. Um, he's also making knives and doing all sorts of wonderful things as well while he's in isolation. So um, you should take a look at him as well. I've not seen him on here today. He's usually making some kind of comment about my giant face that I supposedly have. Um, so yes, I will post something about his incredible tools. Take a look at what he does as well. George and I work together a lot at Ardman. He looks like my kind of... Um, Tiny love child, one of those taller than me, who's much thinner than I am and more ginger than I am now as well. But um, yes, he's an amazing sculptor and we do lots of workshops together. In fact, if you have a look at the Ardman website, 
and social media, you'll see that Ardman are doing some new courses. The Ardman Academy, which will be running this summer uh, via Zoom, actually, because of the isolation business. And you'll be able to go on more complicated courses and learn about armature making, heads and hands and all sorts of different bits and pieces. So, um, so yeah, lots of good stuff. He'll be doing one on making maquettes, which is kind of what we're doing here, really. This is a maquette or a thumbnail sketch that you would make before you go into your final uh, sculpt for a puppet as well before you made it into moulds so that's really good and my good friend Nancy who's Nancy Rose Hats I think on Instagram um, she makes most beautiful hats and she's also a very fine uh, clothes maker um, seamstress uh, textile designer and um, all sorts of things um, so she makes incredible hats but also costumes for uh, puppets and animation characters and um, and also makes her own beautiful clothes as well Giraffe. We've done the giraffe. Yeah, the giraffe was um, a couple of weeks ago now. So the video of that is online. As just to remind you, I do have a YouTube channel as well. Um, it's Jim Parkin, P-A-R-K-Y-N. Um, there's a brilliant website which tells you about stuff. I'm going to start my first newsletter next week as well, which is rather exciting. Um, the Plasticine Post. And you'll be able to... <laughs> Donald Trump. Yeah, well, that is an animal, I suppose. Um, and... Um, I'll be doing plasticine posts. So I'll be doing some tips on there, maybe even a little model sheet for you to, to have a go at working alongside as well. So we've got this carrot shape. I've folded that over a bit like a chili. So I'm making the thigh. And that fat end again, I'm folding it down into a thigh. I'm going to tuck that around the bottom. So this is what I'm mimicking at the moment, if you can see that. We've got the back leg. And I'm going to fold it over and make the front claws as well. So again, I'm going to just tease out the front of that carrot, the pointed end, and I'm going to get my tool. Now you could use the cocktail stick just as well, but I'm going to use this one because these are nice to play with. And I'm going to make two prongs to make those sickle-like claws. So tomorrow's, as I say, is the dromedary. Um, dromedary camel i think still time to to put your vote on the stories whether you want a single hump camel or a two humps so the bactrian is the um two humps and the dromedary is the single humped camel so you've still got a chance to have a look at that as well blue tattoos waving hello blue tattoo uh welcome as well silly wee scribblers having a uh, a good chuckle at that um so I'm making the leg at the moment and um, that is kind of, I kind of lost the shape a little bit. Let me have a look at what I was doing. Yeah, that's right. So I've actually made the thigh. There we go. It's that way round. I was making the wrong leg and then I'm going to just turn that around a bit. So that's the thigh. There's the foreleg. And then we've got these two toes because this is a two toed sloth as opposed to a three. There we go. There's one. So I'm going to replicate that. This time I'm going to be making the right leg. So again, I'm going to take the end of the carrot and just split it down the end with this tool. As I say, the cocktail stick, or you could even use scissors to snip the end open and tease it into a nice pair of claws. There we go. Lovely. Quite pleased with that. And I'm going to fold that around a little bit, make a four leg. So I've twisted the clay a little bit and then I'm going to flatten this end to make the thigh again. So we've got a back leg as well. There we go. So I'll make sure they're roughly the same. So you can be quite rough with it. And as I say, we're going to add loads of texture as well, which is the exciting bit. And you can kind of get really quite painterly with it. Add some other colours. A hermit crab would be particularly great as well. So I'm going to add the back legs and I'm going to see whether that looks right. That's not too bad, I think. So I might shorten that a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of thigh off our sloth. And again, just to shorten that leg. So you can adjust all the way. There's always a reset with plasticine and that's a relief. So I'm going to take a little bit off that one as well. It's a little bit long in the thigh. So I've got plenty of spare clay for other things as well. Duckbill platypus as well, that would be marvellous. Um, I'm really hoping that one comes up. That would be really good fun. Remember our biology lab at school had a case of taxidermy 
stuffed animals and there was a platypus in there and I spent hours looking at that plotting a way of taking it home with me but never never did I've got quite a thing for bad taxidermy as well I quite like badly stuffed animals as well can you please go over the legs again I will I would just attach this one so we can see I've just tucked it onto the sloth's bottom I'm just spreading it around not too worried about joining up the lines too much because apart from the inside of the leg on the leg pits because I'm going to attach uh, add a bit of fur texture later on so what I've done with the carrot if I straighten it back out again to show you I've made a carrot shape I've split the end I've then bent it in half and given it a little bit of an ankle and then I've flattened the top like that was that from Warwick Museum, says Abby. Um, Abby and I are both from Warwick, in and around uh, Warwick. Um, it wasn't actually, it was in Mighton. I went to Mighton Secondary School, uh, which is next to the posh school, uh, Warwick Boys, which I think is now a mixed school. And um, it was in there, the proper old one, but there was amazing. Warwick Museum is really beautiful. If you've ever been to Warwick, visited the castle, there's a, a really ancient old market building in the centre of the town. And... Um, it's got the most amazing bear and ragged staff is the symbol of Warwickshire. There's a giant stuffed grizzly bear there. Um, and there's one in Warwick Castle itself, and I think that's a black bear actually, um, which isn't the actual correct bear for um, for the bear and ragged staff uh, motif. But brilliant exhibition of a giant um, Irish elk skeleton is in there. Um, that would be a great thing to make, wouldn't it? A giant prehistoric elk. We haven't had any requests for prehistoric very much. We had a saber-toothed tiger suggested by Ian, in um, my good friend in New York State. Um, but we've not had any giant elk or mastodons or mammoths, um, diplurodons or any of those things. So, um, so there's a whole world of prehysteria for you to have a go at making. So there we go. I've got my sloth. I'm just going to repair his eye because I've just given it a little squidge. There we go. Repair that shape. So we have our sitting down sloth and mammoth. Brilliant, woolly, woolly mammoth would be great, wouldn't it? Um, so there we go. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white now around the face, just to kind of lighten the uh, around that little mask. And again, I'm gonna take a little bit of white clay. Megalodon, a great white would be great. A temple of Poseidon. That might take a little bit more time. <laughs> A Mosasaur Abbey would be brilliant. Um, yeah, Glyptodon would be great. The giant like, beaver. Um, Hypotherium. A great moa. So I've just put like a white eyebrow on. I think that looks rather cool, actually. Um, that'd be incredible. A Minotaur. Yeah, let's go for Greek legend as well. Plenty of adventures uh, in Greek mythology we could, we could go for as well. Um, if you're a fan of the Sinbad movies and things like that, um, we could really go down that route as well. We go into mythology as well. That'd be rather marvellous. So I'm adding white around there in the mask. I'm also going to put some around the bottom of that as well to make some spectacles. Acropolis. Yes, um, I'm going to stick to the natural world, I think, or the living things rather than, than buildings. But um, you could certainly do that. And um, I have got a brilliant old 1970s um set of harvard's clay that is for brick building make your own bricks everything greek <laughs> great um and you make your own bricks and make houses as well there were amazing all sorts of different kits that harvard's plasticine used to produce so you can have a go at that as well you're not restricted to um to animals but i'm trying to keep it to the natural world or mythology Bacillosaurus, uh, Bacillosaurus might need research. Yeah, that would be great. Absolutely, there's lots of always new interesting things going on around um, dinosaurs, so we could hopefully draw some more of those. So I'm just adding a little bit of texture, fur texture around the eyes now, and you can see I'm just adding little fur shapes as well. Keeping the mask around the face, otherwise quite um, quite smooth. Um, a carpet would be brilliant. Um, I might do some 
I'm going to look at doing the legalities of doing these. I think I probably could do some uh, characters from films. Um, and maybe I'll do that after next week um, because I'm not actually making it for profit. So there might be so I might do fan art. We could call it fan art, couldn't we? Um, so I might be able to show you some of those projects that I've been working on as a fan. Um, some kind of crossovers of different films and cartoon characters. So there we go. This lovely texture. I'm rather pleased with that, actually. A horse would be very good. A carpet would be really great, though. I'm really big fan of a carpet. And if you've ever been to Bristol Zoo, they have stunning gorilla house. And on the other side of the building, um, they have a carpies. And they're really, really beautiful. One of Richard Herring, the comedian's favourite animals as well. He thinks they've got legs like a, a lady in tights, which is rather peculiar, but I can see that. And now I'm going a bit bigger with the texturing around the arms. As I say, quite big sweeping movements like that. And I'm going to add a bit more texture. And if you end up with scuffed bits, you can always pull those off and then smooth it in. So you can use the end of a paintbrush. A pencil would work really well. Cocktail sticks are absolutely brilliant. Now we have Mona. Yeah, that would be good. Some great characters there and I'm going to add a little smaller texture around the chin around the throat and just smooth that over and they've got this really long back hair and arm hair so we can add that as well uh, it depends on the company uh, there we go uh, how close they are with copyright can't do anything Disney exactly this is often the problem and we don't want to get in any trouble with this as well as I say I'm not doing this I'm not getting paid to do this um, some of you have very kindly gone to my website and used the uh, buy me a coffee option and have bought me a coffee, which is very gratefully received. And that's going to help pay for edits of films and buying more clay as well. So um, so thank you to anyone who has supported me. And thanks for all the likes as well. It's, um, it's very much appreciated. As I say, I'm not doing it to make money. Um, it's keeping me sane. And um, I'm getting so many lovely, lovely messages through from people saying that uh, working, some people working in the NHS and it said that it's kept their children quiet. Um, I think it's kept parents quiet as well. And um, that's brilliant. And that's such nice feedback to hear, really. Um, it makes it all really worthwhile. So I'm going to go around the back end. A yellow crested uh, cockatoo would be great. More carrots from Dan Thomas there. Uh, a parrot would be really good. Yeah, we've not had many birds. So for, in fact, we've only had... Well, we had a duck. That's it. That's the only, the only bird we've had so far. So um, who knows what will come out of the goldfish bowl this week? And again, whatever order it comes out in, I will be making them in that order. So you can see that texture now. Look, it's starting to really build up. Lovely. So really go to town along the back add some great fur texture so what you can do if you start from the bottom and then you can start to then layer it up in waves as well so you can see what i'm doing there starting to build up the clay and again you can go over that and add more texture you can change the angle of the tool as what well. hummingbird would be rather fantastic a pirate i have made pirates in the past um some say I was the inspiration for the pirate captain's luxuriant beard. At the moment, I'm looking a bit more like, uh, well, even more like Father Christmas than normal. Um, I'm about to order some new clippers um, and I'm going to attempt to cut my own hair or certainly Nosy is going to have a go at uh, manscaping my beard, my face beard. Um, so that's going to be rather um, <laughs> interesting. Um, it will grow back, so that's that's the good the good side of things. If it does go all horribly wrong, love the orangutan. That's really nice to hear. Fantastic. And Pro Recordings says hello, Jim. Hello. Hope you're all enjoying this. Anyway, um, so we're very close to getting this done. So I've really added some texture. You could add some dashes of colour in there, some brown and black. Even add a bit of green if you wanted to. So, and you can position your arms obviously as you wish. So I'll just move that away from the face so you can see it. So you can get in there. You can open up the arms if you want to, to add a bit more texture around the tummy. Particularly shaggy around the legs. 
so you can really get some texture in there and that's where it's really fun to have a play with and if you put them in the fridge that's a really good way of firming up your clay if it's a very warm day and we've been really blessed with amazing weather um in some ways it's a curse for someone who's trying to encourage people to stay at home and play with uh, clay wet weather is your friend really because it drives people indoors and they're looking for something to do so um so i'm really doubly thankful for all of you for tuning in um and doing this as well it really means a lot when the weather is so nice and there's so many things you can be doing outside as well natural clay on trees seasonally lovely to do also with kids as i learned from you at forest gather that's right actually yes i do this thing thank you so much um eric that was really nice of you to say that um we make clay faces almost like ents or uh, green men or tree spirits and you can use pottery clay ceramic clay and or dig up some mud and then put it on trees and make faces make incredible characters and the nice thing with that is um if it's sunny like this it will actually bake onto the tree without harming it and it will stay there for weeks or months and if it's wet it will get washed away and eventually it will all fall off and get washed away and get taken into the soil by worms and beetles and things as well um so it's all naturally observed so there's actually no waste and no rubbish which is really really lovely but you can really make amazing stuff and at forest in cardigan which is where i'm desperate to go at the moment um we do that as a thing called gather during the summer and amazing craft people um like my good friend alex pole the blacksmith and amanda banham and matt sewell and so many other incredible people uh doing mending and stuff my good friend b does incredible stuff my mate max does stuff about food and there's, oh, there's too many to mention really and um evil gordon i'm not so evil anymore he does an amazing thing on bakery and just so many great things and there's incredible f food and banquets and um incredible music and all sorts of stuff and yeah you can do all that kind of stuff with ceramic clay over there as well so i'm missing that very much at the moment so there we go um dan thomas says mine has a huge head because i ran out of clay doing the rest <laughs> excellent <laughs> um there we go that sloth needs a home here with me <laughs> i'm rather fond of the sloth i think that's rather beautiful pairing um i think next week i might do a competition actually where i'll do a draw and you could win um a couple of my sculpts as well i think i need a bit of space so um, so I might well do that and that'll add an air of excitement to things as well. So there we go. One finished sloth. So I'm going to bring him up to the camera so you can have a good, a good look. There we go. And as I say, you could hang him from a tree, have him hug a tree, or you could just hang out a pair of sloths together. <laughs> 